All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's a really familiar verse, and I want to put some new context onto it today. It's helpful to know some of the words behind it. There's a little alliteration thing going on. All things work together for good, agathos, for those who love the Lord, agape. So that's kind of neat, but the word agathos has the connotation of inward goodness or good character. So the verse is not saying everything is sweetness and light for those who love the Lord. Your problems will always turn out so that you win for those who love the Lord. That's not what the verse is saying. What it says is no matter what happens to you, God will leverage it and take it to make you into the image of Christ. He's going to use your circumstances to create character and inward goodness in you so that you resemble Jesus as long as you're willing to engage it that way, as long as you love him enough to let go of the offense or the injustice or whatever it is in the situation and say, God, I want you to meet me here and I want you to change me. That's what it means to be called according to his purpose in the situation. For example, years ago, I uh, this was before I started coaching, I had an account with a big company and, and I was done using it, so I called him up and canceled it, and I talked through all the process with the rep. What I didn't know was the person that I talked to on the phone quit later that day, and she never entered the information that I gave her into their database. So they kept accumulating every month a $100 or whatever fee for me, and a few months later it ended up with a collection agency. <laughs> I spent eight hours on the phone with them. I sent them eight faxes, 20 or 30 emails. It was agonizing process to try to get this charge taken off my account because I had really had canceled it. Um, they finally did find that record. But in the meantime, about halfway through this, I started to tune into... I was getting really angry at these people on the phone and not treating them very well, even though they were faceless. You know, it wasn't their fault. And so I was like, okay, God, I hear you. I'm going to work at treating them better. So I worked at not letting my anger overtake me, and I worked at treating them well. And, and I took a situation that wasn't fair and that wasn't my fault, and instead of engaging it that way, I changed and engaged it as a growth opportunity. What I didn't know was about six months later, I was going to end up launching a coaching school. And my ministry, the core of my ministry was going to be done over the phone because I coach people by phone. So God was dealing with my phone manner before I ever knew <laughs> that phone was going to be a big part of how he was using me. But my willingness to allow him to deal with me is what let him shape me in that circumstance. So God took something that was, Joseph says, you meant it for evil and God meant it for good. No one meant evil for me, but I, God took a bad situation. And because I was willing to look at me in my heart, he made something beautiful out of it. That's what Romans 8.28 is about, that you have the opportunity, no matter what happened to you, no matter if you were betrayed, um, I've been betrayed by some of the people who are closest to me, if you've lost money, um, if you've, no matter what has happened to you, even if you've sinned and done something really stupid, no matter what happens to you, God promises that he will take that and leverage it and make something beautiful out of it inside you and your character if you're willing to engage it according to his purposes. So that's a great invitation that there's nothing that you're in that God can't make something wonderful out of.